Hello. In this video, I would like to compare a uh, hexagonal nut with a square nut to see which are better as a 3D printing inserts. In one of my latest video, I was uh, 3D printing this screwdriver when I was using the square nut as an insert. And one of my colleagues asked me why I'm forcing these square nuts because hexagonal versions are much more common, cheaper. And at that moment, I wasn't sure. The only answer I could give him is, I, I don't know, uh, I just feel it's better. But now in this video, I'd like to clear this question to see which are better for the 3D printing inserts. A few words about the basics. A machine screw or a bolt used together with the nut uh, will create as a non-permanent joint or fastening. We will place a nut from one side, usually in a 3D printing as an insert, and then we will screw the bolt from the other side. And now if I want to tie this bolt, you can see the nut is rotating on the other side. So this means I have to uh, hold it in one place, and this will be done, of course, with that printed, 3D printed object, until I tie it from the other side. And then the pulling force is big enough to create uh, a friction between nut and this metallic part. About the pulling force. Uh, stress is equal force divided by area. This means bigger area, we can uh, have a half stress. That's why it's commonly a washer is used with the uh, nut and the bolts. But of course, we cannot use the washer with the 3D printing inserts, we don't have that space for that. Okay, now we can calculate the area in both cases. Since same open end branch has to be used with the both nuts, this dimension is given. We can calculate the contact area. Here you can see I show you for the moment the areas. These are M3 nuts, M4 and M5. I already calculated. So the area of the square nut is approximately 20 to 23 percent bigger than the aligning area of the hexagonal nut. Of course, the surface is not 100 percent uh, flat, but um, let's say the plastic will deform a little bit so it will align perfectly. So in this case, if this is important, then the square nut is a winner. Now let's talk about torque. Let's see the theory first. So here we have these two nuts. The dimension is not important, just I want to compare with each other. Uh, this is not the best solution for this. This is some kind of approach from behind, but uh, I only, only need to compare these two values with each other. So for that, it will be fine. And let's say this is the maximal torque for this plastic in clockwise direction. The same torque means these two lines are equal. This represents the force and on the same distance, and uh, first I will calculate the torque on this corner. But of course I have to recalculate this force to the corner. So uh, here you can see this, this is closer to the center, so this uh, force is smaller than this one. Not big differences so far, but only the component of the force which is perpendicular to this uh, surface will make the rotating also here so we have the surface and this is the perpendicular component of this force this means these two forces will do the rotating of the nut but i calculated only on these corners <laughs> but uh, we have this force on uh, each point of this line until the center but uh, on the center it is zero so closer to the center the component of this force will be smaller uh, imagine that we have these lines here and this is zero. So area of this triangle is proportional to the torque applied on this surface. But of course here we have four triangles and here we have six. And now if we calculate the areas of these triangles we, we can get the torque, but I don't know the exact values here because this is only experiment, experimental dimension, but I want to compare these two uh, areas. And here you can see the dimensions in this example. Uh, the dimensions not so important, maybe this is what is important. So the area of these triangles is twice of the size 
than the area on the square nut. So in theory, we can apply two times bigger torque with the square nut compared to the hexagonal nut. But now, uh, let's see it in the practice. I was very surprised. Uh, I didn't expect that, that the difference will be so big. So almost uh, twice bigger torque can we apply with the uh, square nut compared to the hexagonal nut. But uh, let's see it in practice. So I designed it these two objects uh, where I will insert the nut and I will use the open end wrench and I will measure the torque wh when will it uh, break or, or, or jump over the plastic. This experiment I started by placing the bolt into the vase and over it I place this metallic part and a washer to get more stability. And then I started with the hexagonal nut, I tied it with the open end wrench. And I placed this 3D printed part over it. And outside I use this big open end wrench and a hanging scale to measure the mass and from this calculate the torque. As you can see it, uh, it started by more tightening of the nut. So at this moment the nut and the plastic rotates together. And approximately on 1.8 kilogram, uh, I feel that plastic jumped over the nut. And from this I can calculate that uh, maximum torque was 3.5 Newton meters. And interesting here you can see the marks when the nut jump over the plastic. And then I uh, measure the torque with the square nut. This is the plastic part for the square nut. And again I use the same wrench and a hanging scale. And again uh, it started by rotating the tightening the nut. So at, at this moment the nut and the plastic rotates together. And approximately 3.2 kilogram I feel that the plastic jumped over the nut. And from this I can calculate that the, the torque was 6.3 Newton meters, not a double like in the theory, but almost a double. So very interesting result. And here clearly you can see those marks only on one side. This was only 80% of improvement because of these chamfer edges. But if I would have uh, square nuts with the sharp corners, then this transmitter torque would be even bigger. And now let's see all those cases uh, where in different position because they can be inserted inside the plastic on surface as a pocket in horizontal vertical position. So let's analyze each one by one. Hmm. I prepared here several options for inserting these nuts into 3D printing. These four are inserts on the surface of the 3D printed object. These four are in prints where we have to stop the printer on certain layer, insert the nut and then continue the printing. And these four are, I call them pocket insert, where we have this hole and we have to place the nut inside. And in this line we have a horizontal uh, position of the nuts and here we have a vertical position of the nuts and in each case we have a square and a hexa hexagonal nut. Okay, let's see first the surface inserts. I commonly use these insets, for example, on GoPro mount, we also have this uh, option. It can be used uh, even with the hexagon hexagonal nut if we don't have to, to tighten it uh, very strongly. Uh, and I like to use this because if the hole is too tight and you cannot place the insert, the nut in, in the hole, you can heat up the plastic by hot air or placing in the hot water or even using the solar iron and uh, press it, press the nut inside. If the hole is too big, then uh, you can put a, a drop of the glue in the hole and then place a uh, nut. Uh, only I would like to mention, talk about uh, this version here. Uh, you have to print it in this position when you have this bridging. In this position, this surface has maybe too big overhang for some material of some printers. So this version is much better. It's only 30 degree overhang and this area will be printed by bridging. Let's talk about imprints. 
So as I mentioned, here we have to stop the printing on the certain layer inside the nut and then continue the printing and this nut will be built in 3D printed object. Now, there is a problem with the vertical versions because uh, we cannot print, let me show you in a session analysis. So for the square nut it's okay, so here we have to stop the printing on this layer inside the nut and, and close it. But here with the hexagonal nut, uh, we cannot uh, create that type of the hole because if <laughs> if the hole will be finished, we cannot insert the nut. And unfortunately, these two surfaces you can even use this type of the hole because they, they, this surface doesn't help at all because they don't have the opposite surface to help. So with this version, the torque will be much much smaller. Uh, than the square version. So in this case I highly recommend to use the square nuts. And there is a small problem with the printing in uh, horizontal position because, uh, again, let me show this in session analysis, because uh, this surface here cannot be printed with the bridging. It will be because bridging requires two opposite sides, but here if we start to print he, it has to stop here, the printer, and this will be in air. A uh, solution for this, which I use, is that I create one layer thickness here. Then this hole can be covered by bridging completely. And this one layer will be break, broken by, by the screw, or, or uh, I usually heat up the nail and place it inside, so only one layer. and. Uh, in this case, it is printable like uh, in this position. The similar problem we have with these pocket inserts, uh, with the horizontal pocket inserts. I will enable here again the session analysis. And again, he, again here, the same solution to create one layer above the hole. Then it can be covered by bridging and the rest can be printed without a problem. One more thing I want to mention with these pocket holes, uh, with this one here, again similar problem like with imprints, that here the hexagonal nut uh, will align only on two surfaces, two opposite surfaces. So uh, again this version I really don't recommend, if you have to use the pocket insert in vertical position, definitely is hi highly recommend to use a square nut here. And now the conclusions. 23% bigger area and 80% bigger torque and you can use it equally in horizontal and vertical position so for me it's clear that the square nuts are the winners. Only don't forget to buy those with the sharp edges. But it doesn't mean that you have to throw out all your hexagonal nuts. In most cases they will do the job except in those two positions I mentioned two minutes ago. But if you need a bigger torque, you can use always a bigger nut. For example, here I use M8 and I can use almost my full force and I feel that it is very stable, it will not break. And if you need a bigger area or torque with the smaller nuts, you can use the rectangular versions. Well, that would be it from my side. I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching and happy printing.